Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog and this reading vlog is sponsored in part by Cricut and I will be doing a craft with them later on in this video, but it is evening time. I honestly just wrapped up work. I've been spending a lot of time at my desk today being very productive, which I'm pleased with. Um, that being said though, I am really looking forward to the TBR for this video because in a lot of ways, it's like a long time coming. So without further ado, let's chat about the books I plan to read. So here they are. The primary one is actually oof, on my e-reader because I am going to be reading the last 155 pages of Rhythm of War. That's right. I have finally gotten to the end of this book and I'm going to document finally finishing the fourth book in the Stormlight Archives. I'm so pleased I will be moving on or caught up in this series and now I can just read all the upcoming releases as they come out um, and hopefully I won't forget <laughs> the plot by the time the fifth one comes out but that is an issue for another day. So step one of this vlog, read the last 155 pages of Rhythm of War and then from there I've decided I'm gonna pick up the Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. I'm really looking forward to picking this up. I obviously read The Bone Season, I wanna say two months ago, last month. Um, and that was a reread for me and I really enjoyed it. But I do feel like a lot of people enjoy the first book, but the series really takes off with the sequel. I'm hoping there's more like underground crime organization in this. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing how the story kind of kicks off from the bone season and see how I feel about kind of later installments. So I am gonna start this and hopefully read most, if not all of it, over the course of the next couple of days. This is one of those weeks, Matilda, uh, where I have just kind of a lot of big projects, which I'm honestly really excited about. Some of the stuff I'm working on this week, like honestly, like makes my heart flutter a bit. Like I just feel so honored, I guess. Um, but nonetheless, I'm pretty busy during the work day, but that also means I'm gonna be really excited about relaxing in the evening and getting reading and stuff in and hanging out with Clay and stuff. Clay also has a big project this week. So I don't know, we're just, <laughs> we're just doing some things and uh, we're looking forward to uh, post-work evenings, which is what this vlog will be documenting. Tonight, I'm especially excited because Elena and I are gonna watch a certain streamed concert by BTS. So that is literally what I'm doing basically after I start the intro of this uh, vlog. I'm gonna be sitting down and watching that. That is in my carrot for the day and uh, make dinner and then get to reading. I hope to at least almost finish Rhythm of War, if not finish it tonight. Um, and then start the mime order tomorrow. But it's Monday evening. As I said, Matilda's here. Welcome to the vlog. I'm excited about this vlog and uh, let's get started. I'm about to put my onesie on, but I figured I would show you my outfit because I did get dressed today. I'm wearing this sweater from Cezanne. Sorry, my mirror is dusty. <laughs> um, I'm wearing this mirror from Cezanne, which I picked up last year, maybe the year before. They always just have the most beautiful knitwear that I feel like I never get tired of. But anyway, I've had this for a while and I'm wearing it. And then jeans, made well, also a couple years old. But now it's time for a onesie. In the onesie, I basically refuse to not wear every single day. And then slippers, all set to watch the concert. So Clay surprised us with some cookie delivery. If you're from Austin, then you know Tiff Streets. I haven't had this since college and it's both delicious and nostalgic. I'm gonna eat this M&M cookie. While, you know, I watch uh, BTS do their thing, so bon appetit. I have the concert muted because I'm not about to get copyrighted, but I heated up some red beans and rice I made a couple weeks ago. I have some rice all done. Gonna eat some dinner. I love making a lot of food, freezing it, and then reheating it. It makes me I don't know, really appreciative to my past self. So I'm gonna put that together now and enjoy. All righty, friends. So concert watch, dinner consumed. I'm now gonna sit down and do some reading. I have my headphones on, because Clay's, you know, doing a bit of work over there. And I like to listen to my reading playlist when I read. So that is what we're gonna listen to. It's gonna be a great time. I also have my faux fireplace up on Netflix, an absolute ambiance must. But let's get into the last 150 pages of Rhythm of War. 
We're gonna finish this book. I decree it so. Hello, good morning. I am dressed. I am almost done. So close, so close to finishing, um, to having had finished Rhythm of War. I have like 20 pages left, so I'm gonna read that and then I'll do a full wrap up of the book. And then I will switch over to the mime order. Um, today is definitely a desk day. So that is where I will be the majority of today. Um, I am pretty happy because I hung Bubblegum Girl here over on my desk, which I'm pretty pleased with. So for now, I'm going to get back to it. But just wanted to say hello, good morning. I am going to do my crafting at lunch because I've been really looking forward to it and I really want to do some day planning which my craft is associated with so first we edit and work and do emails and then we craft these frozen leftovers really doing the most two lunches two dinners out of that one meal I cooked all those weeks ago gotta love it hi friends we are back at my desk also joined by Matilda because we are sitting down to do some crafting with Cricut as I've already said this video is sponsored by Cricut which is just such a joy I have been working with Cricut for the majority of this year and I have had such a blast doing it first and foremost I would say until I got my Cricut machine I always loved the idea of crafting but it wasn't something I was super comfortable in or confident in but with the Cricut machines as well as the design studio I've been able to make and create so many different things from decorating my apartment to organization truly the world is your oyster with Cricut for a long time I've been using the Cricut Joy which is a really small and compact machine and has been super handy I loved it especially in my New York apartment but friends we have upgraded in this house I have gotten the new machine the Cricut Explore 3 and this guy can do a lot let me show you so here she is and she is beautiful not only is the general surface area much larger so I can create much larger projects which we're very excited about but the different and the amount of materials this machine can cut through is extraordinary my project library has just exploded it's also a very efficient machine because it can cut and draw at the same time so there are a lot of projects that I personally love to do that involve both these things and now it's a two-for-one special so this is actually my first time using this machine today and I'm so excited and this new machine actually just recently came out it's the explore 3 as I said and I love the color I love everything about it but today's project has to do with one of my favorite things and that is my planner this is another thing I've started doing this year and it has changed my life getting a written planner has just been an absolute blessing uh, I personally am big on organizational based planning but I do love to make kind of some custom pages and spread using stickers primarily um, and I like adding stickers for a bit of decor but also just for an added layer of organization or even just like texture so today's project we're gonna make stickers so let's talk about the two designs I have created today so the first design I have here is pretty straightforward these two are just cuts and I'm actually going to using pink paper um, I really like circles just to add to my daily list to honestly write on I just like how it looks and again just adds a bit of dimension and these stars I like to use as I kind of complete certain tasks or if I want to put emphasis on a specific task I like having these on hand so I'm gonna cut out some stars but these guys down here I am particularly excited about because they're honestly so cute. Um, this is a cut and draw. So my machine's going to draw out the cowboy boot and then cut them out. And they're going to again be pink and I cannot wait. And then the second project I've created are all stickers. So these are all going to be drawn and cut. And I sourced all of these images from the Cricut Design Studio and just resized them and also compressed them to make them into stickers. It was super easy and honestly shopping through all of the images is always so much fun because it's just kind of a, I love making stickers. I find it relaxing and I just think it makes my planner so cute so I picked out some leaves which I thought were seasonally appropriate and also just like simple and can kind of like add a little seasonal spice to my planning layouts but we are going to print these out today I have two smart materials of cardstock which also has an adhesive backing so these are perfect for making stickers I have pink and yellow so we're now going to start this bad boy up 
and print and cut these out. It's so simple. Like once you make your design, all you have to do is get your materials and your machine together and get to create it. All right, everything has been sent from my computer to my machine and now all I have to do is press go. I love watching it go, like all these intricate details. It's so cool. And my leaf stickers are done. They turned out so pretty and now it's time to make cowboy boots. And my cowboy boot stickers of dreams are complete. I can't wait to use these in my planning setup. I don't know what about them. I, they're just incredible. I, incredible. And look how perfect the little stars and circles turned out too. If you guys want to learn more about Cricut, I'll leave a link to their site below to shop all of their materials and machines. I'm not kidding. They are an absolute blast and I just highly recommend checking them out. Again, big shout out to them for sponsoring this video. I'm now going to put these to good use and get to some journaling. Hi friends. It is much later in the evening. It's just past 8 p.m. and I just finished up the rest of the projects I was working on today. Um, and now I'm gonna figure out dinner. But before I do all of that and kind of change into pajamas and get on with the rest of my evening, I wanted to talk about Rhythm of War because shock, I finished it. I honestly cannot believe I finished this book. I have been reading it for so long. I just thought I'd be reading it for the rest of my life. And to give a quick like overview of my final thoughts and feelings, I enjoyed this book. I'm still processing the end. A lot of stuff happened at the end of this book. A lot of references to larger things within the Cosmere, uh, expanding the worldview, let's say, and just the political stakes of everything that's going on, which has definitely pulled me in and I'm like, whoa, I'm really excited for future books, both within the Cosmere and within the Stormline archives, especially because it seems like we're reaching a point where things are going to expand outwards even more, I'm trying to be vague, <laughs> but if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and some other things that happened uh, at the end, I wasn't expecting and I still just need to digest and it is pretty wild. Um, other than that, I, really enjoyed the other like 1100 pages of this book I read. I do feel like a lot of this book was more about setting things up for the next book and then the next chunk of the series, if that makes sense. So I wouldn't say it's my favorite in the series. I think it was more about kind of like setting the board than seeing a lot of plot unfold. The plot that did happen I thought was interesting. There's a lot of world building in this. We got to learn more about the magic. We learned more about the spren. We learned more about kind of the signs of this world through Navani's chapters, which I really appreciated. I'd say my favorite chapters were the ones that happened in Shadesmere following Adeline and Shallan. I really loved learning about spren and spren culture. In fact, I think more of that would be awesome in the future because it's like a whole nother world to explore and I think it's a really fascinating part of this fantasy world. Um, this, one, this book was also very emotional. It dealt a lot with mental health and seeing a lot of our characters kind of work through um, many of their personal and mental demons, which I always appreciate that Brandon Sanderson includes. Um, I liked it. I thought it was entertaining. I didn't think it was that slow. I wouldn't say it's as action-packed as some of the other books within this series, but I appreciated kind of the change of direction and a lot of the um, additions that we got within the world and within the Cosmere within this particular book, and I'm very much looking forward to the next one. I also like that we got perspectives of some characters we hadn't really read from. Speaking specifically about Navani, which I already mentioned, and Venli, who I really loved the addition of her chapters in this book a lot. Um, so yeah, wasn't my favorite in the Stormlight Archives world, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit. And I'm really happy I finished it, finally. I can't believe it, but I'm caught up. I'm caught up on the Stormlight Archives, everyone. She did it. Alrighty, pals, I'm laundered. I have like a Levon face mask on, which feels amazing. Clay just left to go pick us up a dinner of champions. We have no food in the house. We are a weekly grocery shopper. Um, uh, to like avoid food waste, like for us, it just works for us. But the problem is when you don't go grocery shopping for the week. You then just have no food in the house. So we were eating leftovers and we're like, we're out now. We're out, it's done. So it's that or like Pop-Tarts. Um, so he went to go pick us up some food. And you know, maybe we'll make it to the grocery store tomorrow or maybe not. Maybe this will not be a vlog that includes much cooking. Um, 
But I'm still thinking about Rhythm of War. I'm still thinking about that epilogue. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, but for now, I do plan on starting the mime order tonight. I have read 155 pages for this vlog so far. But for now, I think I'm going to unwind a bit. I think I'm going to watch some Great British Baking Show and hang out with Clay. Maybe watch some Ted Lasso tonight and then read a bit before bed. I'm my week was definitely kind of front loaded in terms of like projects and deadlines so i do anticipate having a lot more time to read in the later part of this vlog but that's just how sometimes how the cookie crumbles you know but anyway time for gbbo bye my personal form of heaven <laughs> Clay and I watched three episodes of Ted Lasso. What an emotional roller coaster they were. Wow, tears were shed. Um, whoa, I am now about to read some of the mime order and go to sleep, to be honest. It's gotten late. The evening has elapsed and uh, it's time to get a good night's rest. Um, again, tomorrow in the next couple days, I for sure will have much more time to read the mime order, which I'm looking forward to, but we're gonna start it tonight and see how far we can get before falling asleep, so cheers. Good morning, everyone. Cheers. Happy Wednesday. This is very difficult to do one handed. Ooh! The work candle has been lit. The torch. The games can now begin. And by the way, this is my outfit for the day. Slippers and all. And dog toys. Um, it's all very old. I think this turtleneck is still available. I bought a couple of them last year. I wear them under everything. And then this is an old Madewell plaid dress, which I think is just so cute. Anyway, I'm gonna work now. Clay and I, Matilda is also very interested. <laughs> Soup and sandwiches, some grilled cheeses for lunch today. Oh, yeah. oh wow, look at that cheese pull. Oh, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> Hi friends, lunch is consumed. I'm about to go back into my office. I'm actually gonna build a small piece of furniture, which I'm looking forward to. But I wanted to talk about the mime order because I did read 50 pages last night. I plan to read more this afternoon and this evening. As I was kind of expecting, the book opens explosively and also it takes place like immediately after the events of the first one, like no time skips, nothing, which I actually think was pretty interesting, especially because the ending of the first one was like, so wild and the outcome of some of those events were not necessarily completely told so kind of seeing that event all the way through through the beginning of this book i felt like was a good place to start um and my suspicions were correct and that i feel like this one is going to primarily take place in london and focus more on the criminal organizations that are within this sort of scion dystopian place um and it's all very interesting because obviously after our main character kind of found out some earth society shattering secrets in the first one now she needs to figure out what to do with that information and like which parties to go to which is increasingly complicated when she's also being hunted by governments and supernatural creatures at large. So it just creates a difficult scenario for our main character as she's navigating um, everything. But I'm only 50 pages in, so I have quite a bit more to read, but I'm enjoying the points of view and I feel like this one is going to get even darker and I'm hoping I really love this one um, to kind of propel me through the rest of the series. But I just feel like this book is more going to be an indicator of how obsessed I'm going to be with this series in the first one just given the vibe difference what I've heard if that makes sense. I just want a lot of underground London clairvoyant gang stuff and right now that is what we're getting and I'm looking forward to it so um, I'm going to read more in the afternoon and I'll do more check-in but just wanted to let you know so far so good it's intense it's very emotional too as we're following Paige kind of have to like reconcile with all of the trauma she's been dealing with for the past six months which occurred in the first book so I definitely feel like there's a lot of heaviness in this story which makes sense and I'm happy the author isn't trying to like gloss over or skip any of that as well but anyway I do got to get back to my office now just wanted to give you an update I've also read now 200 pages for this vlog so far so that's also Great. Alrighty, friends, my exciting package arrived. So I am going to construct it now. So this is actually a little side table, which I bought to put next to my chair. I have been pulling the one in from our living room. Um, 
when I film videos and stuff. And so I just wanted a more permanent solution. So I grabbed this guy. We'll see if it works out. Hopefully it's not too hard to put together. built it. It's built. I do feel a little dumb because it's one of those tables that's supposed to be able to like go over but it's just a little bit too short. But it's nice because I can move it around um, like to my couch and stuff if I needed like kind of like a lap table. But I like how it's small. Handy. So also took me like five minutes to build so love that. Time for some midday coffee to fuel a little reading break I'm about to have of the mime order, so cheers. Read to page 140 of the mime order. It's now evening, uh, so I'm gonna go on a walk. Going on one of my patented walks as I've been doing, and uh, the weather's actually really nice in Texas today. Like, it's by no means fall, but it's like nice. It's like 70 degrees, <laughs> so I'm gonna go enjoy it. We're on our way to get chicken wings. <laughs> Like and there's a maraca in the trunk of our car, so so sorry. Um, anyway, we're getting chicken wings. That's that's our Wednesday night with the maraca. Wings, ranch, and french fries, and clay. Hi friends, home, some Ted Lasso was watched. Um, and I'm about to sit down and do more reading, but I wanted to do a reading check-in of the 150 pages that I've read of the Mime Order. Uh, and so far, I'm liking this. I was definitely right about this book being more primarily about the syndicate level politics, which I'm liking quite a bit. Not only are we getting a bit more world building on kind of the London side of things and how the city has been transformed by the introduction of magic and kind of this new government that was kind of put in place a couple centuries ago. But we're also getting more insight how the underground like crime syndicates work and there's obviously different mime lords and mime queens in the area which I think is just really cool and I was hoping we'd get more purview into that. Obviously Paige, our main character, is now kind of finding herself back in this situation if she likes it or not. Obviously as a clairvoyant individual who's also on the run, she has very few places she can kind of turn to for safety. So she has a very complicated relationship with her current mime lord because she's starting to kind of realize some of the imperfections of the system that she finds herself in and she's frustrated at her lack of outlet to be able to try to I don't know inform make change all of these things and she's realizing that so much of the syndicate as you might ex expect in crime organizations are more focused on greed and power and like violence um so it's complicated but I am really liking it. Obviously the first 140 pages I would say are much more from an exposition kind of intro point of view um, and I'm looking forward to see how this book escalates because I definitely think it's going to be about shaking things up at the syndicate level which I'm here for. <laughs> um, so we shall see what I'm going to read now and I'll probably check in again in the morning but I'm doing pretty decent with reading. I've read 300 pages. going to read more tonight so good stuff. Hello, I'm up and dressed. Oh, possibly about to sneeze. It went away. Um, I have my coffee. I'm about to sit down at my desk and get a few things done this morning. I was able to read to page 180 last night of the Mime Order and that book reads really quickly. I feel like I'm a broken record a bit, but the bone season I flew through too and I will say 
The Mime order reads almost faster and I am liking it more. It seems even like more gruesome and just in general like more interesting from a world's point of view. Um, and the plot heating up. It's a 500 page long book so I'm kind of approaching the halfway point-ish. So I feel like things are really going to uh, get out of control soon. So I'm looking forward to reading more of that today. But for now, I need to focus on getting items off my to-do list done. So I'm going to do that now. Another day, another soup combination. Guys, it's so nice today. I'm wearing like a light sweater. And look at this, look at this. I haven't been able to do this since we moved in. But I opened up our little Juliet balcony because the fresh air is fresh. Because before, it would be way too hot and I would just be spending money on AC and adding hot air. But it's like windy. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. Matilda is also a big fan of the weather. She sat and filmed an entire video with me today. She was like, I am not getting up. You can work around me. But now I'm going to enjoy this beautiful fresh air. Put a faux fireplace on and do some reading of the mime order. Um, I'm really liking it as I keep mentioning and uh, I've done most of my like admin work today so I'm going to take a moment to myself and do a bit of reading which I'm looking forward to. So I'll keep you posted. So I'm just looking outside because I'm just like, it's so nice outside. Got my faux fireplace, fall candle, cup of coffee, and my book, window is open. Oh, it just feels so good. It literally, to be honest, it feels like the perfect spring day outside. <laughs> but I'll take it on, you know, end of October. I will take it. Hello world, Matilda and I have just been cozy cozy and doing some reading. I have passed the 300 page mark. I'm, page, I'm on page like 301, so I say pass, like literally just passed. And whew, I was right. I was like, it's already really intense. I'm almost halfway through though, and I feel like things are gonna really pick up. And sorry if you can hear the wind. It's really windy today. <laughs> like, there's just like whistling in my complex hallway. It's pretty wild. Um, anywho, uh, the book is good. And I'm trying to not be spoilery, but there's just like a lot of different types of escalation happening at the same time. First and foremost, there's the government, which is called Scion um, in London. And they obviously, for a very long time, um, if you had any type of clairvoyant powers, you'd be arrested. So a lot of people with any type of ability are either in hiding, um, trying not to be detected by the government, or they are now working underground for criminal organizations if their power isn't one that's easy to hide. But Scion is kind of amping up their efforts to try to find and capture clairvoyant individuals and are also creating technology that basically make it impossible to hide. So there is an increasing amount of tension in the city as more and more people are fearful for their lives for very obvious reasons. And also from the first book and into the second book, you get more purview into individuals who are kind of controlling or are overseeing the government and a lot of their policies. So there's just like an added layer to that as well. That's definitely fleshed out. Not to mention due to a few other circumstances, the different gangs that are powerful in London, um, the different areas, there is kind of a power grab happening and like, alliances like power is shifting in the underground world too and Paige with her experiences in the first book and just kind of what she her knowledge as well as her power is kind of at the heart of that and she's trying to figure out like what she wants to do because she wants to make change she's haunted by the events of the past six months of her life and she's also no longer comfortable just flying under the radar like she wants to do something but she's in a very precarious situation because government's after her like she's not uh she can't even like move around easily just based on um how notorious she is at the moment if that makes sense and then obviously there's a third element which is these other beings that have been present on earth for a couple of centuries now and their own political game and interests are also kind of tangled up in all of this in even way that i don't fully understand but it's just like there's a lot of different power balances that are like connected but also separate from each other but that's what makes this plot just really interesting and just pulls you through the book 
um and i do feel like the world building has been much more significant in this second edition which i'm appreciating we obviously got insight into the sort of like magic or supernatural power in the first one but i feel like we've just the world's been cracked open in book two we've been all over london and just kind of learning all these different organizations has just been really interesting and i just feel like overall the quality of the book from book one to book two has definitely stepped itself up, which I was expecting, so I'm happy it's playing out that way. Um, I'm gonna read more tonight. I'm hoping just to read as much as possible, but luckily this book is easy to read in a way that's like, you, it propels you through it. Um, but I have read 455, 456 pages. Um, which is great. I plan on having a pretty low key night. I just think Clay and I are gonna get dinner because we still don't have any groceries. I know. Um, it's our week off. <laughs> well, I usually cook all the time, just not this week. Um, I think we're gonna meet up with a friend, get some dinner, and then I'm gonna come back here and just relax. Clay's going to see a scary movie tonight, and I don't watch scary movies, so. Um, I'm gonna play Pokemon and read books. But anyway, that's my reading check in. So far, so good. This might have been a bad idea. There's an entrance line to get into Spirit Halloween. I needed to pick up a headband, but I'm not sure how this is gonna go. My Halloween costume could would fit. Back home. I don't know why I thought going to a Spirit Halloween store so close to Halloween would ever be a good idea, but dinner was delicious. I forgot to vlog any of it, but we got barbecue and it was pretty good. Um, but now I'm gonna play some Pokemon in bed and read some of the Mime Order. And I am not leaving this bed for the rest of the evening. Me and Matilda hanging out. Clay is seeing his scary movie. And we're gonna watch something cute and fun. I haven't decided yet, maybe Gilmore Girls, but not a scary movie, I'll tell you what. Matilda and I have opted for Buffy, which feels on brand for the season. This episode is also a Halloween episode, so we're watching it. Hello, I'm up. I'm also fully dressed. I'm trying to remind myself that I do in fact like wearing skirts. So I went out of my way to put a skirt on today. And I also wanted to think of an outfit that went with my cowboy boots that I bought. LOL, I can't believe I own a pair of cowboy boots, but I think they're cute. But it is about the afternoon and my primary goal today is to get my life together and finish the mime order. I am 350 pages of the way through that book. So I have 150 pages left and I feel strongly I'll be able to finish today if I just dedicate myself to doing so. So that is the plan that I hope to accomplish. So wish me luck. Other very important news, Matilda has a pumpkin bandana on. Do you wanna show the world your bandana, Matilda? Yes, look how nice you look. Oh yes, show it off. Isn't that just almost too much to even handle? I know, it's fantastic. <laughs> we left the house for our final post-home meal of the week. Hi friends, I've just been sitting here reading as I said I would and I only have 50 pages left of the Mime Order so I feel like I'm going to be able to successfully finish this book today. And when I say the plot has thickened, it has thickened. Someone added some cornstarch to the situation. That was a terrible joke. But anyway, the politics and the overall conspiracy at play within this world, it's like multi-layered and there's so many different parties that are involved. It's just very fascinating to kind of work our way through the reveals. And honestly, I hadn't been able to guess any of the reveals so far and I really don't know where this book is going to end up. Um, and also just thinking about how big this series is, I still feel like we're so much in setup, which makes sense. Like I feel like a lot of the consequences of ultimately what's about to happen in this book are going to have multi-book consequences, which just makes the whole thing very intense. But I mean, obviously I've read 450 pages of this book in only like three days. So as you can see, it reads very, very quickly. <laughs> um, and I just feel like the second book has really cracked open the world in terms of the politics. It's just a more interesting application of the ideas at play in the first one. I also feel like the character interactions are a little more dynamic, which I appreciate too. It's not so straightforward. It's not so 2012 angst like we kind of got in the first one. Just like layered elements to the emotions and the 
even like emotional conflict people are feeling. Uh, everything's not so, ooh, hit myself in the face. Everything is not so cut and dry, which I like a lot. But I'm gonna sit down now, read the last 50 pages, and then I will probably end the vlog tomorrow. But honestly, I would mark this vlog as successful, read an entire book basically, or I'm about to read an entire book. And I finally finished Rhythm of War. Oh my gosh, I can't believe the time is finally here that I finished that book. But anywho, time to get back to reading. I just wanted to give you more thoughts because I have so many. Hi friends and welcome to the end of the vlog, not the next day at all to be honest, but we're wrapping up the two books I was able to complete for this vlog because fantastic news, I actually did finish the entirety of the mime order. I flew through this book, I really enjoyed this especially as a second installment to this series. I'm looking forward to books three and four as I feel like it keeps growing on itself in a way that you would want in a really long series. Paige is the main character I love, I love the syndicate component of this book and I think the magic is really interesting so we shall see isn't that right Matilda about what happens in later installments but I did read this whole thing it's 500 pages so I'm really pleased about that and then obviously I also read the last 150 pages of Rhythm of War which honestly is a little sad I can't believe I finally finished this book I feel like I've been reading it for forever um, but now the world is my oyster I'm gonna read so much a uh, new fantasy series I have been forcing myself to put off until I finish this, but I did really enjoy this installment as well, and I can't wait for book five in this world. I think it comes out 2023, so we shall see, but still a fantastic read as well. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon with another video soon. Bye!